Hey everyone, so this is a video for Keyboard Skills Criteria 2. So Criteria 2, because uh, I've got the brief in front of me uh, up here, is basically about knowing, it says know the functions of the keyboard. So this is really about like understanding keyboard in context and how it can be used maybe like as an instrument, with, as a solo musician and a band. Um, and things about that essentially. So if you look on the assignment brief, there's a list of things to demonstrate, um, but you might not have access to all of them on your keyboard. Basically the spec also says, you know, demonstrate basically what you have, um, but obviously you could talk about other things you don't have um, as well and sort of make, show that you have an awareness of it. So um, I'm looking at the brief and we've got dynamic range, Differences between sounds, pitch bending, modulation, uh, split keys, sustain, um, and things like that essentially. So, and you need to explain what you're doing, what it is, and sort of talk about it in context, and also maybe um, justify where it might be used in a recording or live performance, and kind of compare it a bit as well. So, if we look at dynamic range, you might think this is really simple, but obviously with a keyboard um, or a piano, um, you can play them quietly and loudly. And if it's a synth engine in here, then it's gonna just control volume probably. But if it's a sampled instrument, then it will trigger off different samples of that instrument being played quietly and loudly. I think this piano is actually a, a synth piano really, because that sort of pop. Yeah, sort of sound. Um, Whereas maybe this one is more. So you hear it's quite a somber tone if I play it quiet, but actually that's definitely a different sample, isn't it? Different sound. Um, so you might, you might want to demonstrate playing piano, you know, playing a different dynamic sort of ranges. So we might want to play quietly. Introduction, or like a build up in a song, and then we can use it to really. You know, you can use it to emphasize the crescendo in a song or a build up and stuff like that, and coming down after it and stuff. So, you can play dynamically um, with most keyboards um, and things like that, and it'll go louder or softer, or actually, like if it's got nice sample libraries that will trigger off different samples. The next thing is different sounds. So for instance, um, if you can see my screen, I have, it's quite hard to do with this uh, thing, but I have the reckless, uh, first page of the reckless sounds. So for instance, I've got one vision. Yeah. So if I go through like some of them, do you get the idea? Um, there we go. So we've got one vision. Into the big guitar moment. Um, but anyway, I've got lots of different um, sounds on this and I, I've been able, because it's got a big touch screen, you can organize them. But you probably don't have that on your own keyboards. You probably, but you might have different sounds. So you could talk about how, you know, like this is kind of a nice 80s electric piano sound. You know, pretty much perfect for uh, Purple Rain, you know, Prince. Whereas if we're doing Break Free by uh, Queen, then I want more of a, uh, a synth pad. So. <coughs> sort of thing, if we're doing something sort of funky. You know, want some sort of organs. You know, tone wheel, electric organs, stuff like that. So, 
you can talk about how you know how show how you different, select different things and how you get different sounds, but then talk a bit about how you know that you could use them for different genres, different styles of music. So like I have this is my sort of funky organs. <laughs> But then, if I'm doing something more sombre, I've got, you know, different sound organ. Yeah? So, you've got those sort of things. And like lead sounds, so you can take a solo. You know, then you might have some solo sounds and stuff like that. So. You've got different sort of sounds and talk about maybe think about how you could use them on their own, you know, if I use a nice piano sound, then I could you know yeah, I could play on my own as a solo musician essentially. restaurant or something as a solo musician but can also play with a band using you know I'll get the right button on you know so you can play you know part of a band I don't need to do loads of stuff down there because there's bass guitars I just do the brass parts because we don't have a full trumpet section so now I can add them in because I am one. So think about you know how how the keyboard could be used as a solo instrument, but also within a band, using different sounds and things like that. So really common thing that most of you probably have on your keyboard is a pitch bender, yeah. So really really common, and these are great for solos because it allows you to emulate the kind of guitar bends. <laughs> Fluctuation, so it's great for kind of solos, give a bit, a bit more expression essentially. Um, next thing on the list is modulation. So your keyboard might be able to do this, might not, but you should be able to talk about all these things, even if it does it or not. And if it does it, demonstrate and talk about it while you do it. So on most sounds, you might have modulation if you've got a modulation wheel, or you might have a joystick um, essentially. So if I pray a note, if I put so if I push the modulation wheel up, then what I'm getting is vibrato. And I think with this sound, some sort of harmonics coming in as well. Yeah. Um, so, but other other things do different things. So, for instance, on Purple Rain, when I finish the song. Nice cut off suite basically, so it's a nice way to finish. Like, if you, if you finish a big chord, you can achieve that sort of thing with it. Um, so that's modulation. So, again, it allows you to add some variety and expression to your sound and also change the sound a little bit. So, like on organs, we can change the rate of the tone, uh, sorry, the, the, the rate of the rotary cabinet. Yeah. So I push it up, it's speeding up. Slowing down. Yeah, speed up. So I can control those sort of things. Um, the next thing is split keys. So your keyboard might do this, it might not do it. The ones that college do, quite simply. Um, on this thing, it's actually, it's not that complicated, but um, it has got a little bit more to it. So it picks out like this. On mine, I can go into, so the, these sounds that I've got already in it, uh, full range across the whole keyboard. But if I wanted to, I could stop them down here, like that. And then I could go and add a new sound, so just pick the first thing in there. 
and go back to it and I could start this sound um, just after it essentially so so now what I should have is that original sound and I've got a different sound where I add split keys now where this could be useful is if you don't have a bass player because you can put the bass in the left hand uh, but also when you're playing in a band um, I might want a synth pad in my left hand and I might want sort of brass in the right hand and stuff like that. So, so a really good example is like Uptown Funk. Uptown Funk, you want to be doing chords in the left hand, the big synth chords, and the right hand, the trumpet, brass stuff, you know, da, 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 and all that stuff. So um, there are different reasons why you might use uh, split keys. In terms of sustain, uh, most of you or should have a sustain pedal, so that's mine because it's nice and, and flat to pack in my bag when I go gigging a lot um, you might have more ones that look more like a pedal and I just find these kind of nice and easier live um, so you can explain about how you can obviously use that to um, sustain the notes so we go back and not save what the hell we did to heaven for you Cool. Um, and I go pick a different sound, uh, like Purple Rain, then obviously I can sustain the notes and hold on to them. So obviously this allows you to bleed notes into each other, and if you're not the best of keyboard player either, it means that I can play that chord, hold it with the sustain pedal, get my fingers in the right place, do the next one, and just take my foot off the pedal and put it back down when I change chord. You know, pick it to the right place. There you go. And then the next one. Yeah, so quite nice to give a more ambient sound as well if you want that kind of... And another interesting use of sustain pedals is, for me, I play guitar as well. Um, as keyboards live and what I'm able to do so for instance at the end of one vision we come up on the um, that. Yeah, so I can hold that with the sustain pedal while I'm actually getting my guitar turned on yeah so I'm turning my guitar on you know and uh, I take my foot off the pedal and I'm straight away playing the guitar no break at all because I can hold what's going on the keyboard with the stain pedal so that's where a stain pedal is pretty useful and you might find that your keyboard has other features and if it does talk a bit about them explain them in context try and come up with some songs and ideas as to like where they could actually fit in songs and things like that so for instance on my keyboard I can adjust the levels of all the different um, sort of elements of every sound so if we're going to sound this one has four elements and they'll all be on here so I can I can change the volume of all of them live so start I can start just with like a pad where's that so just start with that you know Just the relative volumes, all the bits of the sound essentially, and you're gonna have up to like 16 on, on keyboards like this. So, um, that's what quite useful. The super knob up here is brilliant, so this allows me to switch between different sounds. So, if I go back on that sound, so I get the standard setting. So, I've got like a piano, and I can gradually mix into an electric piano. I'm on full-on electric piano. But the audience 
guys probably didn't notice when I changed because it changes really gradually from one to another. Um, and then like I can use it to add on distortion, on certain patches and stuff like that. So, you know, and I've got a load of other neat features like a matrix up here for effects um, and things like that. So we could talk about how, how we could use some of these essentially in different songs. So the important thing is that you kind of explain the features on the assignment brief and you demonstrate them, explain them and demonstrate them and talk about them in context or how they could be used in songs, um, you know, if you were playing as a solo musician or a band essentially and think about like the strengths and weaknesses of it. So for instance, I only have four sliders here. Um, whereas the montage, which is the more expensive version of this keyboard, has eight. So I can only control four levels at the same time. I can switch through the pages with a switch, but it's not quite the same as having eight sliders where I can just move everything about really easy and with the knobs as well. Um, and in terms of controlling, like the, um, in terms of controlling the rhythm section on this, um, then on montage, the more expensive version, there's a lot more buttons to control it and things like that and to control arpeggios and all that sort of stuff um, that this doesn't have, uh, essentially. In terms of the mob wheels, I used to have a joystick because I used to have a Jupiter by Roland. And I do prefer the, the, the joystick because you can pitch bend and modulate at the same time very easily because it's all on one stick. Whereas here I've got two wheels, so you have to kind of if you want to pitch bend up and modulate, you have to do it at the same time with two fingers, which is a little bit tricky, um, essentially. But like one thing that's really good is I can switch scenes. And it's, oh, it's right above my bass fingers a lot of the time, so I can easily get up there and change it. You know, They really thought about that, obviously. Um, this thing I can play USB audio in. So if you want to use backing tracks live, then it's really easy with this thing. Control the volume of them. Um, what's another good thing is obviously the screen because I can see all my sounds, organize them um, for different gigs, different bands, stuff like that. Um, but what else isn't so good about it? The the action on the keyboard is is a synth keyboard, so it's not fully weighted or, or even semi weighted um, kind of keys. They do feel a little bit flimsy, and they are actually slightly smaller. I think they're a millimeter smaller than normal keys. Um, these ones, and it did when I first got it, make a difference. So, um, yeah, so think about pros and cons of your kind of keyboard you're talking about and how that would work within a band. Um, but ultimately, like, for instance, this isn't full size, it's not 88 keys, um, it's smaller than that, but so I don't have the full range, but at the same time, I gig a lot. This is really light and um, it's smaller so it fits on smaller stages and goes in a car much easier um, essentially because it can go sideways in my car so you know think about the pros and cons of everything and basically like demonstrate all the things on this art brief and more like what else your keyboard can do and um, and talk about the pros and cons of it all, and really think about in context how a keyboard can be used in a band because they, they can really make a huge difference to the sound